Hi everyone, Ray from Pro String, London, with another racket restringing tutorial. And today's racket will be doing a Wilson Pro Staff 97, RF, RF 97. The racket that Roger Federer used to use, um, supposedly, <laughs> at one point in his career. It's a much older version now. Uh, until they change, I think this was the one before then they change it to the uh, all black um, Well, actually There it is someone else dropped off a racket Same racket Supposedly different paint job also the RF with a little picture of a uh, Mr. Uh, Sir Federer in, in the inside neck of the racket Which I'll also make a video for a lot of times people might think that the stringing pattern or whatever it is might vary between rackets and most of the time they don't the client has provided their own strong string strong string <clears throat> which is the poly fiber black venom be interesting to see how similar this is to our string precision made in germany same factory as us i'd imagine Lots of paper and plastic. <clears throat> Germany phone number is German as well, so yeah, it's actually a German company, I guess, as well. Um, power spin touch to do it, probably has a string long lasting resilience, the application of all the friends and special color coded. Sell it to me, sell it to me, sell it to me, and a bit more of selling it to me. Okay, nothing special, just a normal poly. Um, just normal circular poly in a one, two, five millimeters. I love how some of these companies, well, all of these companies, I, I, I do sell sets of strings, but I try to avoid it because I just, I'm more interested in people buying reels. There is more money in sets of strings, but I don't have time to, you know, do packaging. Not that I would do it myself, you know, just, it just adds cost. So I'm happy to just, um, well, I just don't do sets. Call me crazy, but I um, just think it's unnecessary. My market is more more uh, real stringers, clubs, players, and stuff like that. With time, with time, maybe one day. I just uh, I don't believe in all the packaging. And if I did, uh, if I did do it, then I would just put. I do have. I actually have some packages here somewhere of uh, single sets of strings just in blank I would just add the sticker and and that's it <clears throat> seeing that we're all going through this environmentally friendly uh, process making the world a better place which is great I guess I think I don't know <laughs> 125 this feels quite stiff actually already right you got your two mains as always we started from the top because there's six holes at the Apologies, the long Sunday, Mother's Day Sunday in the UK today. Um, and I'm always tired, it seems, lately. <laughs> um, so you have your two middle strings, your loop at the bottom. Eight strings to each side. We've already got our initial one to each side. Now we're going to count seven on top of the frame. Three, four, five, six, seven seven and then I'll leave myself a little bit that should do the job don't know how stretchy this string is we'll find out pretty soon measure myself with the short side against the rest of the string left in the package cut myself a nice sharp angle pliers very important tool you can use I used to use nail clippers believe it or not that was my go-to tool for a very long time, but I mean a very long time, until I got these with the machine. <laughs> in fact, I got these with the Wilson by other light, which I have in the background, you can't see. Um, I had two of those, and I only have one. I had to buy some new ones recently. It lasted me about four or five years, I think, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> uh, 
tension, just to let you guys know. Right, no tension uh, to per se, but I've, I've, I've um, set the machine to 53 pounds. Oh. Oh. Apologies again with that yawning. Wow. It is 10, 10.43 p.m. UK, London, UK time. So a little bit about this racket that we're showing today. It's 1619. Uh, just to double jump, double check. 1619 string pattern, 340 grams, 97 square inch head size. I am losing my mind. Sorry. I'm gonna tighten my third, my third main string. And now we go to the other side and we start with this one. 53 pounds of tension, probably somewhere down the middle. Balance and control. Balance, control, and power. This string is not stretchy at all. It is a, a co-polyester, by the way. I haven't mentioned, by the way. If you're not familiar with the uh, polyfiber strings, which I not very much myself, actually. May have used this one once or twice before, at the very most. I don't think it's the first time. Pretty sure it's not. So, on our fourth main. So remember guys, to always compensate each side. Three, 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 and then two and two. Stringing symmetrically. If not, you can damage the frame. If you decide to string all eight strings and then the other eight, as you'd imagine, you're applying we are applying a significant amount of tension regardless of the tension that you're adding. Uh, obviously, the higher the tension, the much worse it would be. But just not recommendable at all. You have to do eight strings to one side and the other. Why do them uh, without compensating, let's say? It doesn't make any sense. So hopefully you stumble across one of my videos and you will see it on my videos that we always string symmetrically in three, three, three. And if it's a nine, nine to each side, 18, 20, for example, it will be three, 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 all the way. In this case, there's 16, so that's three and three. There's six, and then we've only got two left to each side. So then two and two. Doesn't matter which way you guys choose to, Whichever side you want to finish first, it doesn't matter. This one is closest to me now. <clears throat> Last main string, I've upped the tension already, 15%. Find your nearest anchor string where you're going to tie your knot, your finishing knot. I use the Parnell knot down, around, through, and again, down, around, and through. I will at some point make a video for the knot. The Parnell knot, at least. I wonder. I wonder if I zoom in. Let's see. Let me see. Thinking it's thinking outside the box here a bit. Let's see. Up the tension. Your last main again. Fifteen to twenty percent is the recommendation recommended amount of tension to add again you guys always want to tie the knots in the same places one one side or the other in this case it's my seventh main i have to say this rack is in unbelievable condition very very good condition not much use and if it has been used much it's not can't, can't tell Definitely not noticeable. So, uh, 
I'll do another knot in a minute. I use the Pornell knot as well for the starting knot. Let me see if I can find a good angle and just zoom in slightly. <clears throat> right, so for your crosses, seven and a half lengths of the racket. One, two, three, four, seven and a half. Another big yawn. Please apologize. I apologize. Sorry. Anyway. <clears throat> I'm just trying to find the time, which is not easy in my life. I'm grateful to always be very busy. Interestingly enough. Stream one ahead always. I forgot about the knot, guys. Sorry. My head is uh, obviously not in the best place right now. Very tired, actually. Haven't done that much today. Uh, we're coaching. Rain, uh, rain suspended uh, everything else outdoors-wise today. It's been an awful day of rain here in London. So when you're pulling your cross strings, be very careful. Avoiding much friction, you want to avoid as much friction as possible between the strings. Pulling the string very quickly. And you're not doing what I just did, pulling the string down. I can guarantee you're damaging the strings. And if you're seeing some markings on the strings, that's because you are not being careful enough and not moving the string from up, uh, up and down. Very important, very important. go again so if I haven't mentioned yet stringing one ahead one in front so as you can see this one's here push that one up nicely against the string above it more or less and then weave another string why because it makes the weave much easier if you're just doing if you're just weaving one string and then just pulling this one for example and then weaving again and so on and so on it makes weaving much harder not that it's rocket science or it's super difficult, but if there's something out there that makes it easier for us, why not um, do that? So this uh, this racket is really made for, at least in my opinion, made for players who play at a high level. We have a very small sweet spot on this racket. It's not as small as uh, a racket I strung earlier today. The actually, but I think it was 339 grams, if I'm not mistaken. The I'll upload that video as well. The Pro Staff, uh, the RF Pro Staff 90, 90 square inches. One of Federer's first rackets when he uh, came to the, came to the professional tour, and then he eventually later on in his career changed to uh, the 97. I believe, I believe this was the first 97, if I'm not mistaken. I know he went through a, a very rigorous uh, um, experimental uh, process until he found the right, the right uh, head size, which turned out to be 97. He stopped at 97. I think he tried 95, 98. So they were making all kinds of rackets for him. 
and uh, they finally are. Uh, I think he was very involved with designing it. <clears throat> I think the, I don't know if it's designed by Federer, let's see. The Roger, Roger Federer autograph designed with Roger in Switzerland. So there you have it, designed with Roger in Switzerland. The ins and outs of that, who knows how true it all is. If Wilson really went to uh, <laughs> to Switzerland to design this all with him and figure it all out, or was it just a, a Zoom call, a few a few uh, Zoom calls, or text messages, or emails? We can only use our imagination sometimes, right? And as you can see, instead of leaving the string like that, I push it up every single time, keep it out of the way. And then it's also in place for when I pull the string, I can just support it ever so slightly. Don't let it come down much. This way, when the racket is done and we finish restringing our racket, we hopefully don't have to move many strings around. That's where we, uh, we will have significant tension loss. This guy said, uh, so he left me two rackets today, this client, or last week, should I say, on my uh, our reception in Mayfair, which we're we'll moving from to another one soon. We received our letter of notification that they no longer uh, can cater for us. Unfortunately, they moved a few months ago, but anyway, we, have, we will carry on having a, a reception in Mayfair, hopefully. Um, he brought this racket and a very different one. The, also an old racket, the Babolat Aero Pro Drive. One of the first, or maybe it was the first uh, Babolat, which is now called, uh, not the first Babolat, but the first Babolat Pure Aero, or whatever it's called, Aero Pro Drive, now known as the Pure Aero. Um, very different rackets, so interesting. Uh, I did question him because he'd only brought one set of string and then circled multi-filament for, for the other. And I did have to ask him, um, what level do you play? And he's like, uh, intermediate, because on this, on the label that he provided, we have pink labels for our Mayfair. We have color coordinated um, labels for different locations to make our life a bit easier when it comes to finding rackets or stringing them. He said, uh, uh, he was an intermediate. He is an intermediate player. However, probably not the best choice to go for a multi for a, to go for a polyester string on this type of racket. This setup really is pro. Three hundred forty grams polyester string. I should have probably suggested. But I find that a lot of times when people already bring their own string, they're not they're not going back. It doesn't matter how wrong it might be for them occasionally occasionally they have taken my recommendation and, and just decided to not use the string they provided but i find that it's a, a very small amount of people that will change their mind they think i'm just trying to sell them they think i'm just trying to make more money which is truly not the case do i make a bit more money yeah of course i do but it's not you know i kind of learned that for the percentage of people Taking my recommendation when they provide their own string is very low. So sometimes chasing people for that is just becoming not worth it. As much as I'd love to uh, help as many people as possible in regards to choosing the right string and being careful with uh, their arms, etc. Sometimes you just, you just can't win. So, yeah. Could have the string come out through the top? Probably. Right, so I don't like any overlapping of strings on the outside of the frame. <clears throat> I'm gonna try and see if I can get this string to go over the main, so this, this string that you're seeing here. They, they, are, they are the mains, which looping down and around here. And the string naturally comes out over, uh, sorry, under. So now it's over, and that way I can now go over as well. Well, we'll try to show you guys, but <clears throat> the grommets on this racket are black, as you can see. Grommets are these little black things here. Uh, 
last string guys so as i was saying before let me see if i can show you i don't know if you guys can see it let's see if i can see it through the camera if i can see it that means you guys can see it i think you can just about see it but there's no overlapping of strings uh if that makes sense or was it this side it was this side no overlapping so the string comes over naturally or under we do exactly the same thing uh to the other side just makes it look very professional uh it's the more correct way is it going to affect anything i'd like to think it's unlikely that it'll affect much especially playability i upped my tension on my last cross string as i'm going to tie a finishing knot in just a moment <clears throat> okay so the clap is okay Clamp's a bit close, I didn't realize the knot. I mean, it's not touching or anything, but. I didn't realize that the. Uh... Okay, I might have to give myself some more space here. <clears throat> Annoying. One of those small things that, you know what? Hopefully I've got enough string here to... So I've got a little bit close to where I could tie the knot. So I'm going to pull the, pull the tension again. This may happen to you once upon a time. I'm just gonna move it, give myself a little bit more space, maybe a centimeter more, but that makes all the difference. Yes, I did up my tension again, just to be safe. So <clears throat> I'm going to leave that there. Let's see if I can get you guys a really good. Um, hmm. 